Here it is, the home stretch. Welcome to part 10. This next bit will be pretty simple. Reset your scene, turn off preview and visibility, and go to your camera rig. Open the top cube's microchip and copy the laser scope we placed at the beginning of the series. Open that laser scope and increase the range by however much you'd like. This will be how far the projectile will travel if it doesn't hit anything before destroying itself. I usually make this no longer than twice the size of the original range. For this tutorial, I'll put the range at 12. Before we do anything else, go into test mode and see if you can only see the ball of this laser scope while aiming. If you can't, do some adjusting. If you can, let's move on. We want to copy the emitter from the puppet to the camera rig's microchip. Once you do that, open the emitter to see the object with the sphere in the middle. We need to move this object to the very end of the laser scope. The sphere needs to be in line with the arrow in order to be accurate, like this. After placing the object, close the menus and delete the copied laser scope gadget. Before we hook up the shoot button with the emitter, we need to set up some parameters. Go to your puppet's camera microchip and place down two end gates and one NOT gate. We need to emit the objects only when they are required. It wouldn't make sense to emit an object far away if the laser scope hits something close to us. Connect the button you use to aim to port A of both AND gates. The second port will require a laser scope wire. Go to the camera rig and open the laser scope and find the hit something output. We want to connect this to port B in one of the AND gates. Now connect hit something to the NOT gate and connect the NOT gate into port B of the other AND gate. This is saying if I hit something, one emitter will emit to the hit position. If I don't hit anything, the other emitter will emit to the position of the extended laser scope. Delete the wire that's in the power port of the emitter in this microchip. Connect the button you shoot with to port C of both AND gates. Now hook up the AND gate that isn't connected to the NOT gate to the power port of the emitter. Then hook up the AND gate that does connect to the NOT gate to the emitter that's in the camera rig. I think it's time to try this out in play mode. Yes, it worked well. Now one more thing. Let's adjust the speed of this projectile. It's too slow. Scope into the projectile cube and open the microchip. Go to the follow chip and increase the speed to whatever you'd like. I'm going to increase it to 15. While we're at it, let's make the cube invisible as well as the projectile when it spawns. When making the cube invisible, make sure you scope into the group until you can move the cube apart from everything else. If you don't, you can make the whole group invisible, which will make you think the logic is broken, which will then induce rage. Believe me, I've been there and felt stupid when I found out the solution. <laughs> Now, let's make the projectile invisible when it spawns. Open the spawn microchip and then the timeline. Place a keyframe in the timeline and make sure you're in edit mode. For painted projectiles, 
open the paint menu and turn the opacity all the way down to zero. When that's done, make the keyframe the length of the timeline. Now let's test this in play mode one last time. This is great. If your projectile spawn point seems off, you can always adjust the tag position on your weapon or hand. If doing multiple projectiles with different weapons, for example, it would be best to adjust the teleporter's position using the sphere. Both will get you the result you're looking for with some tweaking. However, adjusting the position with the teleporter saves you on having to use a boatload of tags especially if you have different sized projectiles that require different spawn points. Now you're all done. This is the most basic version of the third person projectile system I could create. If you want to check out the bonus video, it goes over how to implement things like spawn effects, destroy effects, and health modifiers. If not, man, I hope this series helped you all out a lot. I don't do tutorials often, but if there is something that I know could benefit the Dreams community, I'll do it. Comment below if you have any questions or concerns, and I'll do my best to respond because I want you all to get this. So until next time, y'all, peace.